Hey everyone, today I have a little bit of a gun update video for you. If you saw my video, it was about a month, maybe two ago. I showed you all the guns that I own, everything in my collection from pistols to rifles and shotguns, things like that. Well, I traded in two of those guns and got a suppressor and then my dad got a gun and I got a gun. So we all got something out of it or both of, both of us got something out of it. And I wanted to just do this one because... I want to talk about the guns and I, I like them obviously and two just because I had mentioned in that first video that uh, when I get the suppressor on that Daniel Defense PDW I'd probably make a video on it well the plan was to walk into the store get the suppressor and trade in those two guns and then leave but uh, both of us fell in love with the gun there so we'll get into that more here in a second I did trade in I'll tell you real quick the Taurus PT 1911 I would mentioned in the first video the extractor broke on it. We had tried getting a replacement, and uh, that was it, it worked. It wasn't anything wrong with the extractor. It was Taurus. They have a specific extractor, and it, the the Wilson Combat we fine tuned it and didn't fit the plunger didn't fit with it. So we just gave up on the gun. We still got you know, a good price for it, but we couldn't send it in without paying a huge fee from Taurus and. We didn't even want it anymore anyway, but then the Ruger 7744, the hunting rifle, uh, we just, I, he got it for me when I was like really young to go hunting with him. I never got into hunting, so uh, just kind of was sitting there for years. But So the gun that he got, uh, he's a big Smith & Wesson fan, so he left with a Smith & Wesson M&P 15, you know, just an, a, a Smith & Wesson AR-15, but he got it for a really good deal. So this was on the used rack. It had gel grips along this this uh, the rails here, and it also had in the front this or has this bipod slash vertical grip. So you press this button, out comes the bipod. It's really nice, and he took a lot of stuff off of this. He even took this this vertical grip off, but I put it back on for the video. The gel grips would be too much work. You're not going to really see it all that well anyway. It had a red dot. I put it on the PDW, but he took that off because it also has these flip-up iron sights. So all of this stuff would probably add up to, you know, like $150 alone. Well, he got the gun and all the attachments with it for $450 because it was used, which that's a really good deal. Compared to what I spent for my Daniel Defense uh, DDM4, I'll, I'll just show you the difference here. So this was his, and this is a long time ago I got this. This is like three years ago I got this, but uh, it's much lighter. And, you know, you can tell the difference by just looking at them. The weight difference alone, like, that, that was why I spent, you know, so much on this. But, yeah they're about basically the same in performance i'd maybe say this one might be slightly better but i got it more because it was much lighter but he he got a really good deal smith and wesson is his gun brand and he wanted they they did have it if so if you're in the pittsburgh area the place is called the national armory it's in moon township um not like I'm sponsored or anything by them. I have no, I have no subscribers and things like, so it's, I just want to tell you guys about it. Uh, they're, they're really cool there. They have anything from, you know, they had a Japanese Arasaka, you know, an old rifle like that. They have old pistols and then they had like a Tavor X95, which is the TAR 21, just the updated version, Springfield Hellion, AKs, M4s, old, you know, World War II rifles that had an SDG 44, MP40, you know, things like that. So they have something for everyone. Uh, so if you, you live in this area, definitely check them out if you're into guns. But yeah, so we both left with something we really liked. And I'll take this back off for him. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is you turn this little knob and it just slides off. It's pretty simple. Yeah, it's already off, so. All right. So the next thing I'll show you, I'm going to save the, the big one for last. So this dot on here on my PDW was on his. It's some Chinese brand, which, you know, I'd rather not be Chinese, but whatever, I guess. Um, it's 
a True Glow. It's just some generic brand, that it, but it does actually work fairly well. I give it that. Uh, it fits really well. It actually works a little bit better than the the Trigicon on here, just because I feel like for that was like a two times, so it was, you know, you could see a little bit further with it. This is more of a close quarters type, you know, weapon, at least what I'm using it for. I have this sighted at 25 yards because I actually have astigmatism. So if you know what that is, whenever you look through any optic that has like a dot or an LED light in it, it kind of blurs the dot. It turns it almost into like an asterisk look. So any further than 25, I kind of have a little bit of an issue. 50 is probably my max where it's kind of, and that doesn't mean that I, I can't shoot that distance. It just means the target for me is already kind of blurry with having shitty eyesight. But then when the dot isn't as fine, it needs to be, you know, like a, an actual dot, not an asterisk. Cause that adds, that could, you know, screw up the whole thing. Well, I can work with close range because I can see the paper better. But at 50 yards, it's kind of getting to the point where I'm I'm having trouble seeing it. But so this shoots 300 blackout or 762, which is um, the round is basically meant for suppression. This this 300 blackout. This is an AB Warthog suppressor. It was $500. And it's really good quality. Something that's cool is just like seeing how the end of a suppressor looks. But uh, yeah, you know, you can, it's technically a pistol. It's not a rifle, but uh, I mean, to me, this is a rifle, but ATF rules, whatever. Uh, so you can fold that in, fold it back out. And it's, it's like a really cool, like tactical type rifle. That's what I like about it. So uh, I will, at the end of this video, I'll also throw in all the, uh, me and my dad shooting, so you can see what these guns sound like and, and shoot. So, uh, and before I get into the next gun, I'll show you the difference in the two rounds. So, this this is a normal 300 blackout that shoots 124 grain, and it, you know, it's normal sounding, it's supersonic. So, it, it breaks the sound barrier where... This subsonic, you can tell the difference. It's meant to be quieter, and it's a heavier round. It shoots 200, or it's a 220 grain round. Uh, it's extra powder, and so it's it's a lot heavier of a round. You can just tell by looking at it, but it's quieter. It's meant to, you know, go with a suppressed rifle. Well, I only got one box of that, that 220 because the best I could find or the best price I could find, at least at that store, this, they, you know, this is actually kind of a, a hard round to come across. It was $34.99 for 20 rounds. That's, that's a lot. Um, I may have to find like it in bulk somewhere and just pay overall a lot, but get a better value per round. So, um, yeah, the, the difference in price, I mean, that's $19.99 for the, for the regular 124 grain. So this next gun, I'll tell you the story before I get, I show you what it is. I went to a gun store that is uh, where, close to where I used to work, one of my jobs from like five years ago now, I used to work in a movie theater and there was a gun store that you know, was there, they, during COVID, left, well, then a new store came in, and on their range, they're more of a, like, membership place than they are a gun store, but they do have guns for sale. Well, on their range, they had a rifle that I shot it, and I fell in love with it, and I wanted my dad to shoot it, and I had asked them about buying it, and they're like, we can't sell it because it's under contract with the company or the manufacturer, so we can't sell it. Well, somebody came in and I guess just offered a ton of money. And so they did end up selling it. My dad didn't get to shoot it. And I was like, man, I really want to buy that gun. But I, I was like, what's the chances of me coming across it anywhere? Well, when I walked in to buy the suppressor, I'm talking to the guy who's who's get, you know doing the fingerprint thing with me. And he's like, we actually just got one in today. And I was like, all right, you got to throw that in for me. <laughs> I was like, I can't pass this up. So 
I'll give you a quick little hint to take a guess what it is. If you've ever seen the movie Die Hard, it's in there. I can't remember the name of the henchman who's using it, but it's a very famous rifle. It is in video games and movies. All right, it is the AUG A3. I love this gun. I am not a big fan of bull pups, if I'm being honest, but this gun is something special to me. I love everything about it. It's it's just different, and it feels really nice, and even though it's it's heavy, but it's balanced perfectly, so it's not too heavy. Um, so this Trigicon sight was on my PDW, but I switched it to this, and it works for me much better on here. So how everything works on here, I'll just show you holding it real quick, what it's like. Uh, because it's got this vertical grip already on it, it, you pull it back into yourself, and it's really a tight, easy, you know, gun to use. Well, so with a bullpup rifle, which is what this is, uh, this is the bolt right here. You pull it back, or, or the bolt handle, and then you release it either by pressing the bolt release here, or you can, if there was ammo in here, you could just let it go, but so... I'll just press this, and now it's ready to fire, which there's nothing in here, so don't worry. Uh, so you press this button back here, out comes the mag, and it's a very unique mag. It's Steyr. Uh, I think this is the only gun brand that uses this, like, waffle-looking mag. So you pull the bolt back, and if you wanted to do any sort of work on this like cleaning the gun it's pretty simple you, there's a little lever here you push this down it's pretty this is a brand new rifle so it's a little hard to get off there we go you press that down and then this will tilt out comes the the barrel and then oh, you let that go forward then, so there's this little button here, you can see, you push that in, it's a little difficult, but I'll get it, okay, so you push that out, and then you'll see here, out slides everything, so that's the whole inner working of the gun, the bolt is back here, so Everything is in the back of the gun, which, uh, so performance wise, why they did this. So the gas system, everything is basically working out of the back of the gun. So whenever the round ejects, it ejects out this hole right here. And it reduces the hop of the gun in the front. So it is much smoother recoil and you don't get as much of a, a muzzle climb, which it would probably make more of a difference for full auto, but for semi, it's really not a big deal anyway. So how you, you put this back together, it's really easy. You just push this back down, push this button in, and it's already locked back into place. So that's good there. And then you put the barrel back in. And that's already ready to go again. And it's ready to fire. So, yeah, really nice gun. This cost 2000 And I'm so glad I came that day. Because if I had came a day earlier, you know, uh, it wasn't there. If I came a day later, someone may have bought it. So I came in at the right time. And I'm happy I got this. I've been wanting this gun. And it was between this for a while and then the sig spear lt i like the 11 and a half inch barrel that that gun has but the aug is just kind of something special i just was like i can't really pass this up and i was back and forth and i ultimately about two weeks before i found this i was like i'm going with the aug i'll eventually get the sig spear but I'm not as big fan of the 277 Fury version, which is the, just the full size, where the 11 and a half inch barrel, it's much nicer to me. It's lighter and, uh, which is, it's the new military rifle. 
I don't know a whole lot about what they're doing with it yet, if they're going with the full size of the, the LT, but, or both. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this gun. I, I don't even have really any complaints about it. I know a lot of people hate the trigger. It's, I think it's called a, either it's either adaptive or, um, performance or something. I, I can't remember the, the exact name for what they call this, this trigger, but you can see here when you shoot, there's a little, the, the one part comes out this way. Well, so the full auto version, if you go a little bit, it's single fire. If you go about halfway, it's burst fire. If you hold it all the way, it's full auto. So I can see why nobody would like, or, you know, most people wouldn't like that. But for single fire, it's not, I don't hate it. It's a little hard, so I'll show you here. You can see at the point which the the trigger will pull here. It's really like it's almost halfway into the pull, so you expecting it to pull more, but it it stops you because it's not full auto, so it doesn't go all the way in, and it's like oh you're expecting more of a pull, but it's a really light trigger. Well, it's a light till it goes off, but the trigger itself is actually a little. I mean, not not too bad but yeah that's how you take this gun apart it's really simple i thought it was going to be maybe something like complex and i was like i'm gonna look up a video and i was like oh wow that's really easy i took it apart in five minutes and it was back together so and then this right here is the the gas operating system you can change i don't i don't know what you do with that i i don't want to touch it <laughs> personally i'm not uh that knowledgeable about how you know that would work but you can adjust that for whatever reason and so if you wanted to you could switch out the barrel on here and uh change whatever you wanted there but yeah this this has a side rail if you know let's just say you wanted a laser flashlight whatever it's got this top rail where the original aug was that it was a three times I think it was on there and I do like that side I was debating on getting it but because I can put whatever I want on there and I like this dot it's like I'm just gonna put it on there and it works really well so uh that's everything I got and I'm very happy with it you know my two guns compared to my dad's uh <laughs> the the really quiet one and then the really fun one I'm I'm pretty happy with these and I will show you here in a moment what it was like to shoot all of them. I appreciate you guys watching and let me know what you guys think of these guns. And if there's even any gun recommendations, I always look for even just something to shoot if, you know, nothing to buy. Because right now after those two, that was a lot of money. So I'm going to hold off on buying something for a while. But, you know, I love just going out and shooting something if nothing else. So. I will talk to you guys soon and then stay for the shooting part. So thanks. Bye.